Dr Gavin Ashenden and Mohammed Amin, who is the former chair of the Conservative Muslim Forum. Thank you very, very much. Dr Gavin Ashenden, I'll start with you, a former honorary chaplain to the Queen. Is the problem religion itself? Well, it's no more religion itself than it, it would be to blame football for violent hooligans. Uh, the game of football uh, doesn't automatically lead to violence, but nonetheless, we've been through a time in our culture when violence became associated with different football teams because we take very easily the idea of tribalism. So you can have aggression between human beings with or without religion, with or without sport, with or without different colour, with or without different nationalities. We're just quite violent as people. However, one of the questions you it might be more useful to ask, I mean, we have two problems. One is multiculturalism and the social media have played a big part in inflaming the tensions here. But if you want to ask a question about religions, the sensible one to ask will be which ones contain within them the greatest power to stop violence. And one of the reasons I'm pleased to be a Christian is because Christianity teaches turning the other cheek. And that's, that's at least a way in which violence can potentially be contained. Other religions, few other religions do it. But you can't blame violence, you can't blame religion for the violence of, of the outbreaks in Leicester by itself. No, it's probably worth noting that I am religious myself at this point as well. But, uh, Mohammed Amin, I would like to just bring you in here now, former chair of the Conservative Muslim Forum. I'm just going to ask you a question that I get asked a lot myself when I talk about issues like this. We've had a lot of incidents, whether it's the latest one that's been going on in Leicester and Smethwick, whether it's things like Batley Grammar School, whether it's protests outside a primary school in Birmingham again, actually, where they wanted to educate children not to bully gay people. Is the Muslim faith potentially a bit more sensitive to criticism and things like blasphemy than others? I don't think so. Uh, all religions can be read either to promote intolerance and hatred, and people from all religious groups have done terrible things in the past and to some extent do terrible things today. And I don't believe that Islam is any different from the other religions in that respect. We have terrorists in ISIS who are Muslims. We have people who spend their entire lives devoted to charity because they're Muslims. Yes, no, it's an interesting point. And this is one of the things that I wanted to, to talk about because you raised the issue there, Dr. Gavin, about, well, multiculturalism and the importance of getting it right. I mean, the Midlands is a prime example of this. It is a hotbed of multiculturalism with people from all over the world thrust together very often within quite small spaces. And when you see things like what's been going on in Leicester or Smethwick, it's easy to play into the hands of people who say multiculturalism will never work in Britain. Well, you could never say something will never work. But on the other hand, you could also say that some ways of dealing with human beings are less likely to be successful because they misunderstand human nature. Um, I think the, the, what we have done is we've imported a lot of historical violence from the Indian subcontinent uh, in, into our country. That's what immigration and multiculturalism has done. And there are two ways of dealing with it. I mean, the, the, the preferred way for me would be to evangelize them so they become Christians uh, and learn to practice to love their enemies and turn the other cheek. The other way of doing it is to have a rule of law so you don't have Muslim no-go areas where uh, other people can't go. And we increasingly, I'm really sorry to say, but uh, my, my colleague, Monsignor Michael Nazir Ali, previous Bishop of Rochester, an Asian himself, has been warning about no-go no areas that are run by either national or religious organisations. What we need is the rule of law in this country. Mm. And unfortunately, the police are so terrified about being accused of racism, they don't impose the rule of law. Mohammed Amin, can you respond to that as former chair of the Conservative Muslim Forum? A common question these days about Muslim no-go areas in the UK. This trope about Muslim no-go areas in the UK has been hanging around for decades, at least a decade. It's often raised by right-wing American extremists. There are no Muslim no-go areas in this country. Does it depend what you define as a no-go area, though, I suppose? As it's a very literal term, yes, it would mean, well, you can't go into it. But does it not mean maybe a potentially hostile environment to anyone who isn't of that faith? And does that exist? No, absolutely not. You can, if you look okay. at areas in this country where we have cities like Manchester, Birmingham, London, where particular areas there are large numbers of Muslims, you get very large numbers of non-Muslims going there quite deliberately because they want to go to the shops, they want to go to the restaurants. There are no 
No, there are no Muslim no-go areas. Does, does Mohammed Amin's take on that? 